good evening one and all we welcome you all to the international webinar series on holistic health well being and sustainable development 2022 2023 commemorating azadi ka amrit mahotsav nation celebrating 75 years of independence india's g20 presidency and united nations sustainable development goals 2015 to 2030 as part of awareness and campaigns in collaboration with sri holistic health foundation india sri research institute center for art sciences and well being So before we start our sessions, let's take the blessings of Almighty. Purutvam kalyanam, arogyam dhana sampada. Shubham purutvam kalyanam. आरोग्यम धन संपद शत्रु बुद्धि विनाशा दीपज्योतिर्नमो सुदे दीपज्योतिर्नमो सुदे शुभम गुरुत्व कल्याण आरोग्यम धन संपद शुभम गुरुत्व कल्याण आरोग्यम धन संपद With the blessings of Almighty, we shall continue with today's sessions. Today we do not have uh, much uh, international commemorations, but we have national commemorations. so today is commemorated as amateur radio military appreciation day amateur radio military appreciation day also referred as ar mad or armad is celebrated on may 27th this year on which amateur radio operators from around the world collaborate to allow members of various communities the opportunity to gather in public places like uh, walmart or public parks or football game in us so members of the community express their support verbally and in real time over a two way radio for military members and those who are affiliated with the military veterans coalition forces first responders and military support groups military members get to hear and feel the appreciation of the members of the community it is an opportunity to express openly and verbally thank those to the front lines so the history of america's military can be traced back to june 14 1775 with the formation of the continental army the other components of the military namely the continental navy established on october 13 1775 
and Continental Marines established on November 10, 1775, were created by the Second Continental Congress to defend the region in American Revolutionary War. These military forces were demobilized as part of the Treaty of Paris, which ended the war for independence. On June 3, 1784, the Congress of the Confederation established the United States Army as it is known today. The United States Navy was founded on March 27, 1794, and the current United States Marine Corps was founded on July 11, 1798. The adoption of the Constitution in 1787 gave the United States Congress the authority to raise and support armies, provide and maintain a navy, and make rules for the government and regulation of the land and naval forces, as well as the power to declare war. So the Commander-in-Chief of the United States Armed Forces is the President of the United States of America. Every year, in recognition of the services rendered by America's military forces, the President issues a proclamation to remind Americans of the military's importance of the history and development of the United States because of other individual days that celebrate military achievements. The month of May was chosen to commemorate military appreciation. The Continental Forces, including the Army and Marines, are established in 1775 to defend the region in the American Revolutionary War. In 1775, the United States officially gains independence in 1776. And the current United States Army is established in 1784. And the current United States Marine Corps, as it is known today, is established in 1798. So, Amateur Radio Military Appreciation Day is a day commemorated for appreciating the military over the radio. The US United States, as it is known today, that founded on June 3rd, 1784, it was preceded by the Continental Army, which was founded in 1775. So, a total of 31 American presidents have served in the U.S. military forces. Of that number, 16 served in the Army, especially including Theodore Roosevelt. So, send a radio shootout to a service member. You never know who could just make a new friend. Celebrate the day by donating to the military in whatever form. It may be food, money, clothes, or anything you think they may need, or you may contribute. You can contribute. You can also post an open letter on uh, various platforms, online and offline. Tag military handle so that your message is acknowledged. And the United States Army is one of the oldest institutions in America and has held its foundations in the Continental Army, which is even older than the country itself. The Army employs over 1 lakh personnel. The Army employs over 10 lakhs personnel in a variety of fields, thereby contributing effectively to keeping Americans employed. The United States Army has up to 500 dogs in its canine unit. So they have, an, they have this dog's army as well, as part of the larger army. A total of 16 presidents of the United States have served in the United States Army before becoming the president. Much of the geographical setup of the United States was mapped by the U.S. Army. So the service members of the United States military dedicate their lives to protecting our frontiers. The citizens of the United States love them for it. Armad is one of the many days which are set aside to celebrate our heroes in the military, coalition forces, and the first responders celebrate today. 
the amateur radio military appreciation day is a great opportunity for us to show appreciation for our service members in the military go ahead show your appreciation with your family and friends on this day this week is also commemorated as national children's gardening week in uk united kingdom it is celebrated across the united kingdom from last saturday of the may to the following sunday and this year it is held from may 27th to june 4th british children from all over the country come together to celebrate the benefits and fun of gardening at home and their schools events are promoted throughout the week and there are various types of gardening competitions for the kids to take part the horticulture trade association hta is a uk based organization that has supported gardening related business and manufacturers as well as landscapers throughout the region since its inception in 1899 during the time 60 men came together to advocate for a better representation of horticulture experts in matters such as taxation and competitions the hta is also responsible for the well known national garden gift voucher scheme which was devised by the organization to promote the various business and independent producers that it supports nail grant a radio presenter and the garden expert founded the national children's gardening week in 2015 an event that play takes place before the beginning of summer at the end of the day the event encourages to take part in gardening related activities and events not only the children from across the uk take part in the celebration at home and at school but by simply publicizing the events they help many charitable organizations such as green fingers charity which provide gardening services to children hospices and save the children in 2018 hta assumed responsibility for the national children's gardening week main events nail grant the founder of the event is also member of the association the official website of the national children's gardening week provides resources for the parents and teachers to partake in the celebrations the website also promotes national events and competitors that takes place during this week such as photography competition and even a caterpillar growing competition 60 men from the horticulture trade association formed the hta 19 in uh, 1899 the national garden gift voucher idea is first proposed in 1937 the national garden gift voucher is finally implemented and remains a popular scheme in the uk in 1962 the horticulture trade association assumes responsibility for the national children's gardening weeks main events and promotion in 2018 it's best to start off the beginning to fall and the end of summer which is the right time to start a garden if you live in northern hemisphere that's in september if you live in southern hemisphere then that's in march make sure you have enough space and sunlight for the plants you are growing then buy some seeds and get started some of the easiest vegetables to grow in your garden are peas radish carrots and cucumbers you can make a mini garden out of a cold bowl by filling it with small pebbles and soil and planting some small seedlings you can also add various decorations to make it just as lovely with different plants or a combination of saplings so talking to your plants actually helps studies have shown that sound waves and vibrations actually affect the way a plant develops and grows so continuously telling your flowers how beautiful they are there are over 4000 different species of orchids in the world and around 1500 of them are in colombia so there are many species of orchids a rose called juliet rose once cost its gardener over 
3 million dollars and took him 15 years to grow. Flowers can be as expensive as gold. The first greenhouses were built in ancient Rome so the emperor could have the cucumbers all year long. Gardening actually helps your body stay healthy and reduces the risk of developing dementia by 30%. We often overlook the importance of green spaces and fresh plants for our physical and mental health in cities. This day is wonderful because it reminds us to live sustainably. We love being able to celebrate childhood and the kids having fun. It is the best time in our lives to enjoy everything nature offers and just have fun. So the Green Fingers Charity in UK promotes the therapeutic benefits of gardening in children hospices throughout the United Kingdom. Today is also commemorated as Tracky Dak Day in Australia. It is celebrated every year in Australia with gusto, an Italian term by the way, not Aussie. To understand Track Day or Tracky Dak Day, know that Dak is Australian English slang for trousers. The same pants that American traditionally refer to as slacks. Dags can be long or short, but we don't think denim jeans are dags. Tracky or tracky, spelled either way, is the associate slang term for track suit, that unflattering kind of masculine but unisex athletic outfit, also called a jogging suit, but known by most of us as warm ups. A complete tracky consists of long pants with an elastic waist, the dax, and a matching waist length zippered or pullover jacket with or without a hood. Trackies are usually made of warm, soft knit or fleece fabric. Tracky dax or sweat pants were designed in 1920s for athletes. The athletic masculine look of sweat pants caught as on urban casual wear in the 1970s, then ruled the 1980s and 90s until yoga pants stripped shamelessly out of fitness studios into daylight. The popularity of wearing tracky dags had absolutely nothing to do with being athletic. It was about the comfort of elastic waist pants in baggy pants. But who doesn't want to look like they are on the way for a run or a workout. So even though you never work out or set foot in a gym, so at least for that sake. Although comfortable to wear, sweatpants tend to be baggy, loose and shapeless. Not very fashionable. They, never, they have never been considered appropriate professional office attire. Down under nor in the US for that matter. At least not until the turn of century gave away to clothing style called business caution. This brings us to the genius behind Tracky uh, Dag Day. Actually, this Tracky Dag Day began as a fundraising idea for TLC for kids and Australian children's medical charity. This day to its lead from America's casual dress Fridays. White collar professionals, those who work, requires wearing traditional suit and tie business attire in the office every day, stated wearing business casual to work one day a week, usually on Fridays. Business casual included slacks or dags, but never denim jeans and a collared shirt. The practice grew in popularity and eventually made its way to Australia. So this tracky tag day takes casual dress Fridays down a few rugs of the ladder, allowing participants to wear tracky dags or sweatpants to the office. The fundraiser operates in ways similar to walkathons or jogathons, but does not require any physical exertion. All that is required to participate is a desire to help sick children and a willingness to wear a pair of comfortable tracky dags to work. 
It's a brilliant idea to enlist those who enjoy donating the charity but are not inclined to do a run or walk. And the idea of wearing sweatpants to work appeals to those who don't enjoy getting all gussied up. Gussied up is yet another Aussie English slang term made popular around 1900. So today is also commemorated as National Sunscreen Day or is also known as Sunscreen Protection Day in US. A skin cautious day is celebrated every year on May 27th. This day raises awareness for skin sunscreen products and their valuable benefits to our screen, uh, skin and overall well-being. Sunscreen has been around since early 1900s and contains sun protection factor, which was discovered shortly after. Sunscreens are also called as sunblocks or suntan lotions and come in a variety of forms such as cream, sprays, gels, sticks, even powder. These topical products are applied to our skin to minimize the harsh effects of the sun's ultraviolet rays. And this day also raises awareness for the photoprotective qualities of sunscreen. Sunscreen and its benefits are gradually becoming a widespread knowledge within the growth of sunscreen products in the already saturated skincare industry. If you haven't used it before, you may have come across heard about it or watched a commercial or two centered around it. In any way, we are sure that we have a small idea of what this photoprotective product is. As we mentioned earlier, sunscreen is a photoprotective skin product. In basic terms, this is very essential product. It is used on the skin to protect it from damages caused by sunlight, usually by ultraviolet rays like aging, and skin cancer. It is a topical product, meaning it is applied to particular areas on the surface of our skin, areas most exposed to sunlight. You know, after hearing all this, the sunlight talk, you may assume sunscreen is only for those really hot, extreme sunny days or even more specifically days at the beach. This couldn't be further far from true, no matter the weather hot, warm, cold, or eventually really cold. The sun always comes out. This means there is always the presence of UV rays, although the intensity may vary. But always try to use these natural and organic sunscreen products because they are some skin Types can be very sensitive and can cause a lot of uh, side effects. SPF value matters, as also we commemorated earlier. SPF is a major factor that determines UV protection levels. This means that a higher SPF number is usually higher protection from the sun. SPF levels range from 2 to 100, but the higher you go above, 30, the smaller the difference becomes. For example, SPF 30 offers 97% protection. SPF 50 offers 98% protection, 98 and SPF 100 offers 99% protection. So the higher the number, the greater the protection. Sunscreens does have an expiry date. The FDA requires all the sunscreen to retain its original strength for at least three years. Changes in color, consistency, and effect can be signs of expiration. However, most screen, sunscreens include expiration dates on their containers to let you know when you need to get rid of them. And uh, there is one more uh, instruction or uh, constraint 
it isn't enough to just apply sunscreen all over your body before heading out to protect you for the entire day. Whether we go out or whether we, we go and reapply it every few hours since the average sunscreen is only effective for about two hours. After that, gradually it loses its uh, purpose slowly. However, if you have a busier day where you might be exposed to a bit more sun or sweating than usual, you can reapply your sunscreen more frequently. Learn about sunscreen because uh, we have only been able to touch on the many benefits of the sunscreen. So, learn about uh, and you can also go out of your way to contact a dermatologist or skin anesthetician to get even more knowledge. Or you can do your own research. Sunscreens are for a broad spectrum. They give two different types of protection, UVA and UVB rays. So you would be safer going for a wide spectrum sunscreen that offers protection for both. So no sunscreen created is ever sunproof or sweatproof. They are only water resistant, meaning they are effective for a certain amount of time under water. So they are never waterproof even. That's why because of sweat and other things, we need to reapply the sunscreen lotion or spray or powder, whichever it is. Kids under six months have very sensitive skin and are not advised to wear sunscreen. So they aren't good for babies and also for those who have sensitive skin. Sunscreen sprays are the least effective form of sunscreen. They might not be most effective because you no, know, it depends on the coating because it is morally aerated. So it might not be that effective unless and until you have a thick coat of spray. So generally the paste, there is a layer that forms when you apply. So that keeps guarding the skin for some time. But sprays, unless and until you spray in such a manner, it forms a layer. Until then, it is not much effective. So it's for everyone. It is advised for and effective on all skin complexions, tones and shades. With an exception, if your skin is sensitive or oversensitive. The skin is also the largest organ in the human body. It protects all our internal organs. It is a part of who we are. So this day is also all about our skin and how we bring out the best in it. Sunscreens protects us from aging, skin damage and skin cancer. And always try to be in shades. And when there is extreme weather, extreme heat, always try not to go out. So today is also commemorated as National Hair Stylist. Mental Health Awareness Day. Hair stylists offer more than a cut or color. They offer a sympathetic ear as their customer opens up about their problems. And this May 27th ensures that the hair stylists are also being heard and they have a safe space to talk about their problems. A similar to one that they can so often provide for others. Customers regularly reveal their personal struggles to their hairstylist. Is this, uh, you know, especially these barber shops or cutting shops, whatever we call it, or saloons, hair saloons. 
you know they because we often tend to go to one which we are going since our childhood unless and until we are changing places because we get used to them and they know we are very much used to them and comfortable with them so that's why we keep sharing our personal details personal you know, struggles also with them and one often quoted researcher once stated that hairstylists are without question frequently and seriously cast in the role of interpersonal helpers you know they, they, they most of the time they listen carefully do they they don't question they don't judge the personal problems they hear about nearly as diverse as those handled by mental health professionals recently as our understanding of mental health has developed health professionals have begun to see the potential that the unique relationship between hair stylist and other customers offers some countries now offer specialist training to the hair stylist so that they can help customers who they think may be struggling with their mental health in making in their mission to help service pro providers such as hair stylists grow their business the oldest hairstyle or the oldest known record of a hairstyle is hair braids shown on the female figure in venus of peldor which is approximately 25000 years old you know the, these are very famous in india especially because we have this oldest hairstyle this hair braids now these are very oldest and ancient hairstyle and almost 25000 hair salons were open across the us during this time of 1920s and a study suggests that hair stylists may be able to identify mental health problems in their customers in 2008 as per study increasing acknowledgement of the role of hair salons can play leads to numerous mental health training courses being made available to hair stylists in 2020 a new focus and booksy created national hair stylist mental health awareness day to raise awareness and give hair stylists the opportunity to discuss their well-being openly so first uh, commemoration or observation of this day happened in 2021 if you are exper experiencing mental health difficulties and would like to talk to someone you can call helpline that provides treatment options and programs to raise awareness and provide support and education to those in need you can also reach their websites or various modes of communication to reach help lines and a visit to hair stylist is an increasingly being recognized for the impact it can have on your own mental health alan wilbar the director of behavioral health previously stated that getting a haircut can make a person feel better and improve their mental wellness instantly previous studies have shown that being a hair stylist scores high highly for job satisfaction and is generally considered low stress largely because those who do it really enjoy their they said hair stylists do have a busy schedule spend a lot of time on their feet and work on intimately with their customers these factors can all contribute to mental health difficulties so it's important to check in every now and again to make sure that the people you care about are okay so if you know any hair stylist then reach out to them to hear their perspective on mental health in the industry having these conversations out in the open can help raise awareness and improve understanding anxiety is most common 
an estimated one in five hairstylists are likely to experience an anxiety disorder in any given year. Roughly 91% of hairstylists in the US are women, making it a very female dominated occupation. There are approximately 77,000 saloons in the US and around 7 lakh 7,000 people working as a hairstylist, making it a huge industry. The average hairstylist sees 12 clients per day, which equates to a lot of time being spent on your feet, which makes it a very busy day. The average person visits the hairstylist once every seven weeks as per the study. So everyone deserves a safe space. The nature Just a second. The nature of their craft means the hairstylists are naturally put in the role of chief listener, a friendly ear who not only makes you look good but also feel good. While that is great for customers, it's worth remembering that everyone deserves the opportunity to talk about how they are feeling, even hairstylists. Today is also commemorated as Slavery Abolition Day in Godlock. This also extends to the Caribbean nations, once colonized by Europeans, who were notorious for enslaving indigenous peoples and subjecting them to unspeakable atrocities. On Slavery Abolition Day, citizens attempt to confront their past, their those subjugated by serfdom or other forms of involuntary servitude also marks this important day. This day reminds us of humanity's cruel history and our efforts to ensure that it doesn't repeat itself. So this Slavery Abolition Day is celebrated every year on May 27th in Garlo, a French overseas department in the Caribbean Sea, where indigenous people have lived for hundreds of years. It also commemorates the anniversary of Godlope's abolition of slavery in 1848. Christopher Columbus, an Italian explorer, arrived at St. Mary in November 1493. He later named the island Godlo in the honor of Extremadre Monastery. The slave trade first brought workers to the colonist sugar, coffee, and other plantations in 1644 when slavery became institutionalized. Enslaving another human being is not a crime that can be prosecuted and punished in over 94 countries. Today, approximately 20 to 50 million people are enslaved in some way. The first recorded instances of slavery were in summer, uh, sorry, in Sumer, Mesopotamia. Over 90% of the enslaved Africans were brought to the Caribbean and Southern America. 
Over 12% of those taken across the Atlantic on slave ships died in the transit. So between 1526 and 1867, approximately 12 million enslaved people are transported from Amer Africa to Americas. More people are estimated to be enslaved today than in any other historical period. Slavery and physical brutality left enslaved people and other descendants with long-term emotional and mental scars. And this day serves as a reminder of the lengthy and vital struggle and human dignity. Today is also commemorated as old time player piano day in US. It shows appreciation for the fun musical instrument. An old time player piano is simply an unusual type of piano that plays by itself. Player pianos are also known as piano laws. Old time player pianos read notes from tiny perforations on rolls of paper. The rolls are changed to allow the piano to play different songs. Suction powers the piano as two foot pedals are pumped by a pianist. The pianist can also use levers to affect the sound. Old time player pianos are created and developed in 1880s. After a dip in popularity, player pianos are rescued by a number of musical instrument collectors since 1950s. Frank Holland forms the British Piano Museum in Brentford, which is now the Musical Museum in 1960s. Harvey Rohill publishes a book titled Player Piano Treasure. 1960. The player piano has a pneumatic player mechanism that is divided into two parts. The operator can control the volume of each half of the piano in order to create musical effects. There are versions of the player piano that are fully automatic and require no manual human control. There are various companies that make the instrument using different technologies. The first successful instrument was launched by Welty in 1904 and was called the Vigna. Player pianos are a representation of advancements in music. If you have an old time player piano or know someone who has one, can use it and have fun experiencing the old instrument. They were mass produced in late 19th and early 20th centuries. Old-time player pianos became less popular in 1920s when the gramophone was invented. People bought sheet music to play on the old-time player pianos in their homes. So the player piano is like another, like other pianos, except it has a pneumatic player action that plays paper rolls. The player piano has 88 pneumatics that represent each note on the piano. So it is fun, it encourages creativity and it preserves culture. Today is also commemorated as nothing to fear day in United States. On this day, in 1941, President Franklin D. Roosevelt declared the only thing we have to fear is the fear itself. So fear is a natural and necessary survival response. However, it can also be a negative emotion when it causes us to act irrational. When we let fear rule our lives, we see things different. Become more cautious and timid or overreact to the circumstances in the ways they are potentially dangerous to ourselves and others. Nothing to fear day is a time to evaluate ourselves and identify where our fears are. It drives us even to do things that keeps us from being the best version of ourselves.
So fear starts in the part of the brain called amygdala in response to a threat. While different methods work for everyone, the best way to do to overcome fear is to face the fears head on. The fear of death or dying is called thanatophobia. The first step to addressing something is to become aware of it. Take a look inwards and try to identify what scares you and why. Get in depth of what the fear truly is. Fear often has an underlying explanation or emotion that can be heard to see at first. Try to break down your fears. Become aware of how nothing is as scary as it seems. But if it is, you are capable of handling it. Understand and affirm that there is nothing you cannot overcome and nothing to fear. So you can listen to podcasts, read books, or even listen to Roosevelt's speech to remind yourself of your strength. There are certain unconventional fears, the fear of yellow color, xanthophobia, the fear of peanut butter sticking to the roof of one's mouth, Archibut tyrophobia, the fear of number eight, octophobia, hippopotamonstros, sesquipedaliophobia, the fear of long words, even to spell it is also quite long. And a globophobia, the fear of balloons. Fear can be crippling feeling. It can be detrimental to our quality of life, relationships, experiences, and so much more. So the message that there is nothing to fear is a great thing to remind ourselves. Much like repeating positive affirmations can improve our mindset, this message helps us believe that there is nothing to fear if we put our minds into it. So whether dumb phobias or serious real-time fears, we are often surrounded by unpleasant thoughts and feelings. This reminder makes the world feel less scary and more full of possibilities. So today is also commemorated as National Grey Day in the United States. It is observed throughout the country as part of observances of National Brain Cancer Awareness Month. National Grey Day encourages everyone to remember those lost to brain cancer, celebrates who survived, and support those who are enduring the pain and hardships of brain cancer. The day is organized by Voices Against Brain Cancer, which aims to host events throughout the country to raise awareness about brain cancer and advance research towards a cure of med for the disease. Several events are organized across the country to acknowledge those suffering from brain tumors as well as those who have survived. The events are geared towards spreading the formation, information about the brain cancer to encourage early diagnosis and raise funds for the research towards a cure. Brain cancer causes the growth of malignant brain tumors. These tumors occur due to formation of abnormal cells, which may begin in the brain or spread from other parts of the body into the brain. The primary symptoms of brain tumors include headaches, vomiting, seizures, mental changes, me mental changes, problems with vision, periods of unconsciousness, difficulty with motor movements, sensations, or difficulty with talking. However, these symptoms can be ascribed to a multitude of illness, making brain tumors hard to diagnose. Additional complications include the difficulty of scanning the brain because most imaging devices are disrupted by the blood-brain barrier. Research for a cure for brain cancer is underway. Treatments range from surgery and radiation therapy to chemotherapy. All these treatments come on with complications. Surgery is preferred course of action, particularly when there is only one tumor that originated in the brain. However, multiple tumors that originated in other locations require radiation therapy or chemotherapy. So the symbol for the brain tumor is gray ribbon worn on your clothing. 
many brain tumors develop with no symptoms till their size causes a decline in person's health. Brain tumor headaches are a pressure type of headache or sometimes sharp and stabbing which gets worse at the night or in the early morning. Voice Against Brain Cancer organizes several events throughout the May to raise awareness about brain cancer. Attend an event near you. There are no, no known causes. The causes of brain tumors remains unknown. Though exposure to ionizing radiation and inherited diseases increases a person's chances to develop tumors. Secondary tumors or tumors that develop elsewhere and spread to the brain are four times as common as primary tumors. Brain tumors are second to leukemia among cancers that occur in children. In Australia, the cost of having brain cancer is about $1.9 million, which is the highest among all types of cancer. The average five-year survival rate among people with brain cancer is about 36% and is not so great. Today is also commemorated as a National Cellophane Tape Day is used for something that is very important for the world of today to bring things together. The invention of cellophane tape was, has been credited to Richard Gurley Drew. He began his career in 1920 at the 3M company based in St. Paul, Minnesota. Here, Drew developed masking tape for automobiles in 1925. However, it was in 1929 that they got the idea of using then recently invented cellophane to make tape. Cellophane is a moisture-proof substance that was used for wrapping grocery items and baked goods. Drew was looking to create a tape made of cellophane that would seal packaging, at the same time blend it without being visible. So cellophane tape was originally named Scotch Cellulose Tape. Then it was renamed to Scotch Transparent Tape it received the name Scotch when a body sharp painter, while testing the tape, yelled in frustration, take this tape back to the Scotch bosses of yours and tell them to put more adhesive on it. So cellophane tape was revealed to public and its marketing began on January 31, 1930. It was patented in the same year on May 27. So this date has thus been chosen as National Cellophane Tape Day. Cellophane tape is still around and produced today. You can see cellophane is a thin biodegradable transparent sheet made of regenerated cellulose. As its name suggests, cellophane tape is made of bioplastic that is sourced from cotton, wood pulp, and other natural fibers. So we, in 1953, research by Soviet scientists revealed that if cellophane tape is put in a vacuum and peeled off, it produces X-rays, the X-ray tape. More than 90% of the US homes as well as business use masking tape for various purposes. Today, there are more than 400 kinds of tapes made such as packing tape, electrical tape, transparent tape, tape for labels, and many. Manufactured during World War, World War II, duct tape was originally called as duct tape by the soldiers due to tape's ability to repel moisture, just like water of redox back. Sometimes ornithologists ornithologist made use of uh, scotch tape to cover the cracks formed on soft shells of fertilized eggs of pigeons, thereby allowing them to hatch. Today is also commemorated as National Grape Popsicle Day in US. To celebrate grape popsicles as well as the discovery of popsicle itself by making uh, home grape Popsicles, this day is dedicated to grape popsicles. You can make them in any flavor 
like lemon, strawberry, watermelon, orange, cherry, and many more. Invented by accident in 1905 in California, popsicles are one of the most popular frozen treats in US. Humans have enjoyed frozen desserts for millennia. Today is also commemorated as National Big Out Day in US. The residents of Bellingham, Washington were convinced to wear weird, crazy looking wigs during this commemoration. And wigs in general have existed since ancient times and their popularity keeps growing in strength. A wig is a hair accessory made from either human hair, animal hair or synthetic fiber. Short for the word periwig, wigs are traceable to the earliest recorded times. Due to hygiene conditions of that period, they were used to curb and prevent spread of lice as wearers kept their head shaved underneath the wigs. The majority of human hair comes from India and China from people who either shave their heads for religious purposes or sell their hair in return for payment. In modern times, men rarely wear wigs as wigs are considered feminine. The rarest and most expensive wig is rumored to be Michael Jackson's wig, which sold at an auction at $75,000. So with this, we shall end the commemorations for today. So thank you everyone for joining us. Before leaving, we request everyone to quickly fill up the feedback form, which is being shared in the form of polls. And those who have not registered, we request them to register for today's webinar. The registration form is being shared. You can first fill up the feedback form, then you can fill up the registration. The feedback form is active in the form of polls. We request everyone to attend to the polls immediately. Thank you everyone for joining us. See you all tomorrow at the same time with the same link. With different topics and we thank everyone for the supporting us being since quite long time and uh, we are able to commemorate celebrate azadi kamrit mahotsav and also united nations sustainable development goals and india's g20 presidents and we have been able to share various aspects and topics as part of commemorations. So we thank everyone, each one of you, those who are attending, participating, presenting, collaborating. So it's a mutual success, mutual win-win for everyone. It's a success of everyone. So let's make it the more successful by active participations and presentations. And soon you will be receiving an email in coming days or coming months with the format of the publication. If you want to present your research or if you want to publish your research or your presentation, you will be asked to provide the summary or the full paper or abstract, whichever you would like to publish. So that accordingly, we'll let you know. We will send you the format also, length and the style that is required in which paper or abstract 
or the manuscript research work has to be sent to us for the pre-processing of the publication. Once that is finalized, you, you, you can also see that simultaneously as per the feasibility. Otherwise also you can see once the publication is out. So soon we will be sending only those who present their research work or talks only will get an opportunity to get your presentation or your research work or your paper to be published. So this is only for the opportunity, this is opportunity for only those who have presented in this forum and those who have participated in this forum and those who have collaborated in this forum. Only they will get opportunity to be part of this publication series, this series, entire series. So we request those a one-time life opportunity, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Utilize everyone. We have almost completed one and a half year and we are heading to the conclusion in coming months. So we request everyone to be proactive and can you choose topics as per the theme and accordingly present. And on May 31st, we have World No Tobacco Day. On this occasion, we are inviting, it is a one-day international conference starting from 6 p.m. with the same link. Registration forms have been circulated and also is available on the website. Once you visit the website on the main page itself, you have all the details. You can register yourself and if you would like to present on any topics related to tobacco, cancer, or treatment modalities and hospice, palliative care or cancers, type of cancers, any of the topic you can choose and complete the formalities so that you can present your, make a presentation, present your research paper or talk. So thank you everyone. Once again, quickly fill up the feedback form. See you all tomorrow. Take care, good night.